Hello everyone and welcome back to Coloring with Haley. It's time for everyone's favorite part of the month, my finished pages for May 2021. And I've already put up my summer setup because it's pretty much summer to me now that I'm on summer break. I know it's not summer yet, technically. But um, I got this linen tablecloth here at Walmart and I've added some new accessories from Hobby Lobby. The first one is this little bird in like the little sun hat with her sunglasses and I think she was super cute. And the next one is this little lizard. It's kind of funky little metal lizard here. Which I thought was super cute and it was a lizard so of course I had to get it. So those are going to be my little decorations for summer. And we will get right into the books I colored in. I did quite a few pictures. Since college ended it gave me the time to do everything. And we'll start with World of Mice like I usually try to. And we're on the landscape pictures now, so let me get the book situated here. Here was the first one, and this is one kind of just like, I guess it's like a kid's toy room, because there's balloons and like little paper airplanes and stuff everywhere, confetti. This one is super cute, and it used most of the colors in the book. I like it when the pages are very colorful and use all the colors. And my second one was this one, and it's the little mice rowing down like a river, or maybe even it's a puddle, because you know, they're little tiny mice in like a shoe. And this one's super cute, and I already started on one of my pages for June. I'll be so excited to finish this book, because I think it'll be the first, like, big-sized coloring book I've ever finished. And now I have Sci-Fi Babes, which I may have marked one of these to color later. I don't know. Yeah, I did. I didn't color two in here. I just colored one. All right, so let me get to the one I actually did color. And it was this one. I colored this way back at the first of the month. And I'm really happy with how she turned out. This is, according to the sign here, Amy Asteroid. She's 17 years old, currently in math class, and her ears are really cold. So I used just a little bit of Posca paint on this one, on these sort of earmuff type things here, to highlight them. And I didn't use any glitter on this one. I didn't feel like there was really anywhere for me to put the glitter on this picture. Um, I liked the matte look of her lipstick. I did go, let me find one of these pictures in here. I did go back to a few of them, like this one, for example, and touched them up a little bit. Um, these are kind of grayscale. Let me find an uncolored example to kind of give you an idea of what I'm really talking about here. Okay. So some of these areas here that are black, if you use a dark colored marker near them, they're not 100% completely black. And so something like that really stands out. So I went back to a lot of the pages and went over all that with a black marker because I hadn't previously, and so it looks a lot better. And I know I did it on this page, and one somewhere here in the back somewhere, but I'm not too sure where. See, this is a good example. You can tell that it's not like a 100% dark black, so if I use a dark color on like her hair, it'll really stand out as being more gray when I want it to be, you know, like a solid black. I know I did it on this girl's face, that's what it was. All this black hair, I went in with a black marker and just colored over it to kind of touch things up. Not exactly like a finished page completely, but just a little bit of touching up. Next is Coco Wyo's Chibi Girls, because I'm obsessed with their books right now. And I did this one on a color and chat. I did like a sped up color and chat because uh, I wanted to see how that would go. And I think I like doing them that way. I'm able to do them more often if I do them that way, because I was talking in that color and chat if you missed it. Sometimes when I'm coloring a page, I have to really concentrate and it's hard to color and talk at the same time, so it's easier for me to film it and then talk over it. But this one turned out super cute. I didn't use any glitter on this one, but I did use my gel pins on um, the little ribbons on her feet and like the bunny's nose and ears. I didn't want to use a marker and like get outside the lines. And I used white for the bunny's tail. All right, and then I did one from Chibi Horror, which is a book that I haven't colored in in a long time. I was trying to do some of my books for my tin books to finish. And this was my page for Mermaid. Um, she's, she's a mermaid, right? She's like a monster mermaid, but she's a mermaid. This was super fun to do, and it took me a lot of time. I don't particularly like coloring water. Like, mermaids are fine, they don't bother me, but they're always, like, under the sea. I don't like coloring water. So, this was a good mermaid page for me to do. 
and I used a lot of paint. All of this light green here around the water is Posca paint. And there is a lot of glitter on here too. Her horns are glittery, she's got seashells in her hair, these pearls are glittery, this like jewel here is glittery, the jewels on her arms are glittery. I don't know, I thought she really called for like a lot of glitter. But I'm super happy with how this page turned out. It turned out awesome. And I think I mainly used my Cali Arts and Ohuhu markers on this one. Um, and the water is green because, like, I don't know, it could be like an alien planet, right? She's kind of a different mermaid, right? I mean, she doesn't have human hands. She doesn't have a nose or anything. She's got gills, so... She's not exactly a human mermaid. She's like half mermaid, half alien. So that's why the sky is yellow. I wanted to do something just a little bit different. And I, again, I'm just thrilled with how this came out. I think it took me three days of working on this one, but it was worth it. Next, I have Sea Life, Color by Number by Sachin Sachdeva. So Miss Anne from A Colorful Life started Sachin Prachi in 2021, I think was the tag, um, because his family has been going through some hard times, and we were going to show our support by coloring in some of his books. And I did this crab. And I just used my Sharpies on this one. Nothing special, just my Sharpies. But it was just a cute, like, simple little page to color, and I really like how it turned out. These are good books, um, if you like color by number, that are simple, because they kind of have... Not, the color palette isn't the same for every picture, but they don't go over eight colors. For example, here, six is orange, and on this picture, six is blue. But he kind of uses... There's not a complete palette in here that says how many colors. But I would say there's probably 12 basic colors that you'll see. So this is a really good one if you can't get a big set of markers. Because kind of every color it calls for, you know, red, orange, pink. You're going to have those in, like, you know, a 12 set of markers or something like that. So this is a good book for anyone to color in. And then I've got Space Girls and Aliens by Deborah Muller. My favorite Deborah Muller book still. And both of the pages in here were buddy colors this month with Misty from Country Gals Coloring Place. And I'll be sure to put her in the description down below so you can check out her channel. We do buddy colors in this book all the time and I love doing them in this book. Misty picked out this page here, the book belongs to page. And I have never ever once in my life ever colored a this book belongs to page. So this was my first time doing it. And I'm happy with how this one turned out. This one's just a cute little robot. And he's like sitting on a planet and he's got a little welcome sign. And I used a ton of paint as you can see. The robot had um, like little black lines here that I would assume were like supposed to be highlights. So I went over them in my marker. Then I used some marker up here to do the trail for the star. And there's some on the little like ray gun here. And there is glitter on some of these stars as well to make this one nice and shiny. But this is my little gold robot and I really like how he turned out. And then she also picked out this little astronaut picture. Her shirt says Space Girl, but she's like an astronaut, right? And she's super cute. Um, I didn't really have anything in mind when coloring her. Nothing specific that I wanted to do with the page, so I just kind of went for it, you know, as I was coloring, and I picked the colors and went along with it, and I think it turned out really nice. I like the, um, the orange and blue on her suit, and like the, I guess this is supposed to be smoke, or maybe like, like the Milky Way, you know, the kind of collection of stars or something. And, of course, glitter on her eyes and on some of the stars. I like to do, like, half the stars and glitter, half of them in markers, just to set it apart a little bit. But really thrilled with how this came out. There were lines here for highlights, so I would assume they were highlights. Uh, they're kind of funny placed, but I, I did go ahead and put them on her. But again, I just love this book. This is... I would love it if Deborah Muller made like a sequel to this one. It's got to be my favorite Deborah Muller book. So I color in it all the time. And then we have Whimsy Girls Celebrate the Holidays and Festive Occasions. I'm still doing the color along in this book that's year round. And for June we had, not June, for May. May we had May Day. Um, I never grew up celebrating May Day. I had to look up what it was. Seems like it's more of a... European holiday, but we never celebrated it when I was a kid. What this picture looked like to me, I'll be completely honest with you, is a scene from the horror movie Midsummer. So that's what I colored it like. 
she got blonde, like some of the kids had blonde hair and they're wearing these little white dresses and everything. Because I don't know, I don't know much about May Day, right? Like I said. So I colored it like the movie. But I, I did look it up and they are in that movie apparently celebrating like a summer holiday very similar to May Day. Because I think the movie takes place in Sweden or something like that. So it's, it's like kind of the same holiday. That was, that was my like inspiration for this page because I had no idea what to do with it. But I am thrilled with how it turned out. You guys really liked this one on Instagram. And I did put glitter on these um, ribbons that are tied to this pole. They dance around this pole. And I tried to do all kinds of different flowers. And I left the dress white. But I did put like a little bit of gray in it. So it kind of looks like it's shaded a little bit. And I'm really just thrilled with how this one turned out. This was the more difficult version of this page, by the way. For Mother's Day, I went with the simpler version because I just wasn't feeling the more difficult version. I'll show it to you real quick. Kind of got like a lot of pattern and stuff going on and you guys know that I'm not really a fan of patterns so it wasn't for me. But I'm very happy with how this turned out. I just wanted to show a mom and her kids. It was it was a good one. It's not my mom and me because I don't have siblings so it's just any mom and her kids you know. I'm an only child so she does kind of look like my mom though because of the brown hair and brown eyes, but that wasn't really intentional. <laughs> this one turned out really cute though. I did use a little bit of white to outline like the lace on her undershirt here and the whipped cream on the coffee. And there's a little bit of glitter on the silverware and the like the picture that one of the kids did for her. I don't know if it's going to show up very well down there. There we go. Like this little picture that one of the kids drew. Super cute. <clears throat> and I did like her necklace. Uh, it occurred to me it was like a little macaroni necklace with little beads on it. So I made sure it looked like a little macaroni necklace. That was a fun page to do though. And then in the Chibi Girls two books in one by Jade Summer. As always, I got to do my two pages. Working on finishing this book too. <clears throat> I just said I don't like coloring water and I don't. So this is a page that I had put off for like a really, really long time. And again, it's a page that took a lot of work. But I'm very happy with how it turned out. I had seen a lot of people coloring this page and um, I just want to do something a little different. I've seen a lot of people do nice bright blue water and pretty bright blue skies and I was like, no, I have to be different. So I made it kind of like a turquoise teal water and a sunset in the background and I am very happy with uh, how that came out. I thought it looked really good, especially with her skin tone and the color I picked for her hair. And this is all blue paint. I did like the foamy parts of the water in it. I thought for a minute about doing every single black line in the water with paint, but I was worried that I only have one blue Posca marker and it may run out trying to do that. So I just went with like the uh, foamy parts of the water and this part here where she's kind of throwing water around. And there's a little bit of white paint on her goggles and her eyes here. And then her outfit is glittery as well. But I do like the colors I picked for this and I think it turned out awesome for pages I've been putting off so long because they had a lot of water in it. I think I don't like coloring water because I don't really know how to. I want to just go in and color it like one solid color, right? <clears throat> Let me clear my throat there. Okay, and then I did this one <clears throat> at the beginning of the month. I think this may have been the first page I colored in May. And this is the teacher. Um, I wanted to do her like my favorite teacher, her name was Miss Grayson, and she was an older lady, so she had gray hair. So this might be the first chibi girl in this book that I have done with gray hair. And that's a little sad, I should do more with gray hair, because she turned out good, didn't she? And there is a lot of paint, again, on this page, because I want it to look like an actual chalkboard, you know? There's no black lines around the white chalk, so of course I went in on all the black lines, and I made it all white. And I did, did the tape, too, and then I did the little paper airplane and her chalk. And there's a little bit here on our outfit. And I just did, you know, like a blue uniform because that was our colors. When she was my teacher, I think we the were the Blue Jays? Gosh, it was back in elementary school and I don't quite remember. But this picture turned out really cute. I liked it a lot. And there's just a bit of glitter on her earring and on the brooch that she is wearing. I went ahead and used some of my Spectrum Noir markers on this one. They're kind of old so I don't use them very often. But... I do have a lot of browns in here, so it was very good for doing all of this wood everywhere. The desks, too. Oh, I know what else I used. I used gel pen on here for these, like, little sticky notes. Because I have a 
yellow gel pen that is just kind of like the perfect color to make little sticky notes. Again, super happy with this one. Kind of did it as like a little piece for my favorite teacher that I had growing up. And I'm thrilled with how that came out. So, I got two more to get through. And the Kawaii Animals Coloring Book by Coco Wayo is one of them. I also did this one on camera. I did it while I was doing a tag. This is just sort of a little random page with, I don't know, it's not even just farm animals. There's a little fox there, too. But the main thing in the page is a cow, so I guess it could be farm animals. I don't know. This one was fun to do. I did some, like, uh, I did the darker lines around the places where I colored. Sometimes I do that with simpler images because I think it looks nice to go around them with a little bit of a darker color. There is some on the cow, too. I went around it with gray. And there is glitter on here on some of these hearts and some of the circles. I didn't really have a uh, theme in mind for the background, so it's kind of white and red and blue, and it sort of reminds me of Wonder Bread now, looking back at it, but I still do like how this page turned out. This was super cute and super simple to color in, so it was really fun to use my markers in it and to outline everything. I think it turned out adorable. I love the chickens. I love the cow. And oh, you know what? There's a little bit of glitter on the cow's ring here and the ring in his ear. But this one is so fun. And then my last one was from Creepy Kawaii. I got this book right there at the end of the month really quickly. Turned out a page in it because I love this one. It is Larisa May's follow-up to her pastel goth coloring book. And I did this little cat here. He reminded me of a kid in a Halloween costume. So it gave him a little red plastic pitchfork. And I did the little highlights on it. And I did the cat red too. Because I think he's supposed to be maybe some type of demon or something. Did his cloak. I did the outlining thing I talked about on the cat and uh, like the platform that he's on. Because that was to me like the central part of the picture. I felt like the fire and stuff was just kind of a background. Not as important. So I decided not to do the outlining on that part. I did the little bats up here in purple because I thought purple would just be, I don't know, a cute color for bats, right? And there's a little bit of glitter on the hearts and like the sparkles here. But I really liked this page. It turned out super cute. Um, I had the same problem with some of the black printing on here not being like super solid black. So here where his face is and where his hands are, I did go in with a black marker to finish that up. Just to make it look more solid and put together. Because the printing on this one, I'll show you a blank one. It's pretty dark but not like 100% when you put it up against this kind of grey color here. It shows that it is, you know, a little greyer. So... Those are all the books I worked in for this month, and let's count these up here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. And you know what? This isn't actually all of them. I forgot that I have a Corkles book over here that is so big I can't even like keep it on my desk. Give me just a minute to like rummage around for that and get that. Okay I'm back. I have found my Quirkles book and we are zoomed way out because this is a gigantic book and in order to show you the full picture I have to zoom out all the way. So I did Kurt Cobain from Quirkles Icons and these always turn out really good. This one especially looks really really good on camera. I used blues and purples on this one because I kind of wanted it to be a more melancholy picture. I'm a big Nirvana fan, was a big fan of Kurt Cobain, and his life was, you know, tragically cut short, and a lot of the Nirvana songs are kind of sad and melancholy, so I just felt like purples and blues were kind of the perfect color combination to use on Kurt Cobain, and again, I am so thrilled with how these turned out. They are so cool. So that was Corkle's Icons. That would be all of the books that I colored in. There we go. All right, so that's 17, I think. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed.